morning everyone it's uh 12 o'clock actually on the button on the 21st of august 1982 today i'm going to take you around uh, the flight area uh we're going to take a look at some places in there the uh there's a chipper i want to show you um the local shop and also Trespian rocks the rocks is a beautiful place that's been renovated and taken over by the local GA club in, in partnership with the, uh, the Family Resource Center and the uh, Wexford County Council. So today I'm going to take you up, we're going to walk around the sites. Uh, the weather is uh, overcast but it's not raining so everything's good so far so please stay with me. Okay so here's the top of Barrick Street and we're heading over to Kevin uh, Barry Street. I just wanted to show you this one place here, it's the Pike Bar. It's owned by the public and is Trevor Ducey and it's one of the cleanest bars in probably Ireland. It's a really nice location. A lot of the lads from the Mary's Amado Town and the Wexford Bows and all the sports clubs here usually hang out. It's a really nice place. Uh, if you're ever in Ch to Wexford, stop by at the Pike. It's a really nice place. Now we're heading up Ke Kevin Barry Street. It's a short little road and it goes up into the fight. Up ahead you can see the Swan, it's a fountain. It was uh, put up there in 1888 by the corporation and it's, uh, it's for the protection and the cruelty of the animals. Um, it's a green area, whereas the fight, it's an old Gaelic term that means the green. And they had fairs, market fairs and that between the fight and John's Road twice a year. So that's where Historians believe the name derived from. And back to the right here, there's an old graveyard. It had fell to uh, ill repair, but uh, you can see they've had some renovations. It's padlock now, so we can't get into here. We're going to head up towards the Swan Fountain. Now there's a local pub just up the road called The Swan. And right to the left is the Fight Guest House. So if you're looking for a bed and breakfast, relatively close to the town. This is just, it's just to the south of the, the main town. And across the road of it is the, uh, is the Swan. You can see there's Wexford County Council has some planning permission in. Probably to fix it because usually it was filled with water. Like it goes back. Here's the sign. Directed by the County Wexford Society for the Prevention and Cruelty to Animals in 1888. Now it's a nice little green area, but I would say yes, you wouldn't let your kids play on it because a lot of the local uh, dogs use it. It's like a green area for all these homes, so you have to watch where you're stepping. And there you see Billy Kelly's, the fight. And beside that is Kelly's Firearms, established in 16, uh, 1968. And then the Montessori, it's like a preschool for kids before they go to school. So, And then here you have the National Learning Network. It's for continuing education that the people maybe not, not have finished their reading cert and that, and they want to get into the working and well established into, uh, into the local community. So to the right, you can see there's Mulligan's Funeral Home. These homes go back hundreds of years. Originally, the fight area was established, mostly it was a fishing area. So all the fishermen would have these homes, be leasing out, and they would go work on the boats. And we're coming up to, there's a laneway just up ahead. It's called the Rope Walk Lane. And that's where they would use, the women would stretch out the, uh, the rope and wrap it around and create ropes for to bring on to the uh, fishing vessels. There's, there's the swan, the swan bar. 
It's a very nice beer garden in the back. Really nice clean premises as well. And here's coming up to that rope walk lane. It's a narrow lane and it goes all the way back. There is one house in the back. I'll take a pop. And you see it goes all the way back. So they would stretch the rope all the way down to the end and use that and that would be the length that they would need. And I believe there was seven such lanes in the area used for, for uh, twining the rope and stretching it out and then drying it and then wrapping it up and then it would go onto the boats. Okay, and then just up to the left there, it's uh, Fisher's Row. And the name came because most all the people who lived there originally were all fishermen. Okay, now I'm coming up to another little street. And there's a nice little mural here. This goes to Rockview Court. And this mural is for George Ross. He was an all Ireland senior accordion champion and a winner in 1956. He was born in 1916 and he died in 1994. And there's the uh, St. John of God's Primary School where a lot of the kids in the local area come to stay and it's a big recruiting area for St. Mary's of Maudlin Town, which the clubhouse and that we'll see just up ahead. It's a very nice, well-kept school. And it's really close to the chipper, which I'll be uh, showing you a little bit later. It only opens up at uh, 4 o'clock to 10. It's open Monday to Sunday, so seven days a week. It's a, it's a relatively old chipper. I believe it goes back to, uh, I think it was uh, 1956 or I think it was established. I know it's been modernized, but it's it's uh, local. I'm going to show you one of the local delicacies. It's called the Rizzo. I know I probably pronounced that wrong. And then here's another street, Brandon, uh, Bernadette Place. It's a nice little cul-de-sac of an entranceway. And there's a pathway that goes back down into the shop, so it's all interconnected. Yeah, so we'll go back to the chipper a little later and we'll try out the, the Rizzo, which is native to Wexford only. So if you're ever in Wexford, make sure you try it out there. They're available in most of the chippers, uh, but the uh, Mangan's chipper is one of the best. I think it won an award last year for one of the best chippers in Ireland, so it's well worth your while to uh, partake in the delicacy of Rizzo. Now there's two types, there's a bread rizzo and a bread pie. So maybe we'll try out both and see which one's best. Okay, now we're going to stop for a bit as we get closer to the shop. Okay, we're coming up to the uh, junction of William Street and heads onto the Rossler Road. Here's that lane I was telling you about that goes up to the back of Bernadette Place. So you can handy out. Here's Londis in the fight and there's an old pub that's been closed down for a while in Brady's that used to be the local for a lot of the Marys back then but uh, sadly it's been closed for I'd say 12 years or so it fell to disrepair and the county had put on a, a preservation order to uh, abandon it but it, it's it's had a little bit of a facelift now so here's Londis it's a local community it's a community shop that's it's, uh, every, it's part of the staple of the communities. They employ a lot of local people. In the back they have a hot counter and they have great meal deals for, um, for a couple of euros you get a full dinner. And basically a lot of people can come here and do groceries. It's close by, uh, it's not too far so you don't have to go into town or you don't have cars or that or transportation to go to the, the big supermarkets. has a whole hot counter it's really good there's a lot of people there so I won't go up to it now but it has like chicken dinners uh, roast beef ham all sorts of stuff plus you can have the normal uh, rolls buns of rolls 
a reasonable price. So, yeah, so this is the, the shop. Like I said, everyone comes in, so you can come in here, you meet all sorts of people, you can have a good chat, so it doesn't it doesn't always take too long to truck over to the shop, but you can come in here and be stuck here for half an hour talking to people, which is not a bad thing. I think a lot of places need more of it. And then here, we're the sponsors of St. Mary's of Modlin Town, the local GA football club. And then we're back outside. Here's another pub here, the sailing cot. Now Sundays they all shut, they only open up at half 12. So you can't buy any alcohol in the supermarket or anywhere until after half 12. And then another little Boyle Sports bookies. There's a lot of bookies in Wexford too. And if you go down the road, there's Danon, which they make milk products. And then here up this lane is where we get to the rocks, the Trespian Rocks area. Here's a new building here that was erected uh, about two years now. It's the uh, Rape Crisis Center. And we're waiting for the construction on the left there. See this fenced in area? That's going to be uh, the, the new uh, Wexford's Women's Refuge. So, all this will be under construction shortly. And you can see the clubhouse right to the in front of you. And then we'll go up around the back and up the hill. And it has a beautiful view on the top of the rocks. You can see over the clubhouse all the way to the, the water and in the bay where Wexford is. So really nice. A little history about the rocks. Um, it was in Cromwell's day in uh, 1649. He had made it his... Uh, place of attack. Originally when he came to Wexford his army was stationed around Spawill Road area but he moved it up here because you'll see the Vantage Boys. He had all the, the ships and had the cannons loaded here and he used this to attack Wexford Castle and the Wexford Wall to the city. You can see uh, the close proximity and the height so this was another Cromwell area so here's the pitch and to the back we have a training pitch that's almost developed we'll go take a look at that and here's the clubhouse it's not here right now but it'll be lively enough in a few hours almost every day someone's using it and another key point is uh, the championship will be starting on uh, Saturday coming, 4 o'clock in Patrick's Park. So it's the first game. The championship's really important to the GA and uh, the local communities. And there's good rivalries. And everyone really takes it really serious. But it brings the community together. Like it's on a beautiful evening, see these rocks up ahead? You'll have hundreds of people just standing up on the rocks. And watching the game and then also the north wall you could see on the head the rail uh, right by the fence people stand and watch that so you have a lot of beautiful vantage points and then this way you can see part of it to where the water is but when we go up higher you'll see the real advantage we'll go up here and we'll take a look at what it's like to watch the match from here like the vantage point and then we'll go up at the top of the rocks on the trails. So this used to be what's no before 2011 it was not really fit for use. It was all overgrown and basically it was a drinking hole for a lot of the local lads. So they'd come up here and drink cans and stuff and it was well kept. So when the club was approached and that with Wexford County Council and that to develop it, we were located uh, on the other side of the town. It was hard to get to with uh, a lot of people didn't have transport and it is quite far to the other end 
So we would had to have higher buses for training and everything. It was high, very expensive. But now that we got this developed, the amount of kids that come up here and play and train, it, like our underage is just, it's just huge. So it's a, it was a, a lifeblood for the community also and also to the club. So it's a nice area you can see. The kids during the matches, they climb up all on these rocks here. So you can see a beautiful view. And then in the distance there, you can see the, the chapel of uh, Bright Street. And then we'll, now we'll walk down and we'll go up the pass. Now the pass go all the way up around the rocks. You can see the training area over there. We'll go to that on the way back down. That was developed over the last couple of years, predominantly mostly by the, uh, the president of the club, Barry Kinsella. He practically lives up here. Doesn't want to take any credit in that, but this place has a lot to do with him. And in the last couple of years, and Wacker Nolan, who was he passed away shortly, he he was an, the mayor of Wexford Town, and he had a lot of influence as well on getting this developed. Plus, we had help with the local TDs. Oh yeah, um, Brendan Howland. He was instrumental in getting this place set up and started. And it's used for all sorts of things. Like there's, people can rent out the clubhouse for for parties, birthdays and stuff. Um, yeah, so here we're walking up this path. So this path wasn't all here. So this has all been recently developed. You can walk all around the place. Good little running trail too if you wanted to sometimes you see the lads in the football team using that to get in shape running up and around so it's very steep but it's not too long like anyone could do it you see a lot of people bring their dogs around for walks. Also ladies with prams, with babies. It's all a community run event. So. See? It goes on there. And now, look at that view over there. See why Cromwell used it. There's another major employer, Senator Williams, or Senator Win uh, Windows. And there's the clubhouse. Hey, yo. How are you? Fine day. Love you though. See? It's a beautiful view. Then again, it's right on your doorstep. Free. You can see there's park benches and bins. There's one up there. Some over here. Look at that. See, you can come up here, have a picnic with the family. There's even bins provided. Like this is a Sunday morning, and you can see it's relatively clean. Beautiful little area. Easy to get to. There's some more rocks in the background there. That back face is uh, Bernadette Place and Rockview Court. Rockview Court has a big, huge hill as well. Just a little running path that the lads use to train the bottom, but they'd run up to the top of the hill. It was called Hilly Holly. Yeah, it's nice and well kept. It's 
very clean. <clears throat> but the clubhouse is a very big part of the community. Um, all the kids go there, so they do. There, there is pride in the, in the clubhouse because it belongs to them. Um, as well with the family resource center, they work hand in hand in all these works. They're going to have uh, those, you know, the portable like gym stations along the way where you can do like the uh, standing treadmills and do some exercises. They're going to have them placed around uh, the walkway so you can walk and do exercises while you, you go. Here's another bench with a bin that you can sit out and look out. And then here's the training pitch that I was mentioning. That was this, wasn't even a scrubland. It wasn't even that, just two years ago. Now look at it. You have that there, which is gonna be open to public. And then you have the pitch over there. Like I said, a lot of work's been done in the last few years. We're, uh, we're blessed here. Like I said, see everyone brings their dogs. Takes them for walks. But it's a beautiful little area. You know. So if you come to Wexford, come down to the south part of the town. And you can uh, come for a walk. It's not far from the hotels. There's a Talbot Hotel. A couple of guest houses that are just along the way. You know. Like, look at the views. Look at the mountains there. It is beautiful, eh? And, and there's the walking trail, so it tells you the how much time it takes and the distance and the proximity you are in Wexford County um, so it breaks it down how much you want to walk there's easy which is blue trail orange and red which is moderate so it's a beautiful little trail to walk on and then we'll just walk around the back part Lovely, eh? Imagine this is a play area for the kids around the area. So they not only keeps them off the streets. It's a safe environment. There's lots of people around. And it helps to recruit them for when they go into football years. You know, if you don't have an underage and the kid's developing it, your club is in trouble, so... Mary's were in the uh, intermediate uh, final championship last year. Unfortunately, they they fell to Cross the Bay. Uh, Cross the Bay were deserving winners that year, but you know it'll come around. It's like the Field of Dreams, the baseball movie. If you build it, they will come, and that's true here. See, and then you walk back on this. Look at the trail. And then you walk back towards the clubhouse. So I'm gonna sign off for now. And I'll turn on and we'll go back and I'll show you a different part of the modern town area. Okay, this is the park that's located right opposite the sailing pod from the Londis and the flight. It's uh, just a gym area for the kids. Little bandstand. The uh, resource center did some work. I see the uh, mural on the wall there with the little boat. It all ties into the history of the fishing idea of it. Flowers. It's a nice little area. Let me just quickly scan. See the you can play here with the kids. And it gets you to the back part into the, uh, the heart of Modern Town area. So the, where Londis is, that's the flight area, and then it breaks off and it, 
This is into the modern town area. Some of the windows there. And they're nicely, you know, the, the fences protects it so the kids can come in and out and keeps it secure. There's one road, Galbar Road, and that leads right to the water over there. Let me take a look. See the water's right there. And then here's where we're coming up to the Family Resource Center. This in conjunction with the Marys that we talked about, but here you can have like it's it's all sorts of training classes go on here, crafts, uh, you know, lunches and stuff. So it's really good for the community, um, and they work a lot with the local GA club, and it uh, you know develops the area. See, it's beautiful murals there. That's obviously to represent Wexford Town. You have the twin chapels there. A little garden here as well, a little seating area, and inside there is kitchens and stuff. So, here's now we're on Hantoon Road, there's Dolphin Road there. See how close they are, and we just walked around down to where the water is. This afternoon, actually. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Depends when you get up, I guess. Morning or afternoon? Good yourself. See how close the water is, eh? You can smell, smell the sea air. Well, at least I can. I don't think you can. Unless you have that smell of vision. Remember that crack when they, I think it was a Maple's Fool joke a few years back, where they were launching TVs with smell of vision. You'd be able to. Watch steaks being cooked on a barbecue and smell it at home. There's some little boats, sailing boats, out in the water. And here, I can feel the rain starting. I don't know if it's rain or just mist from the water, but the GoPro's uh, waterproof anyway, so. Here's the train tracks. Take you down towards Rosslair, and that will go up towards the rest of the town in Escorty, like towards Wexford Town and away to Escorty up to Dublin. And here's Harbor View. And I'll stop that now. I'll join you later. So this is uh, the Pike Bar, and there's the wonderful Trevor Ducey. He's pouring a pint there. 
one of the best pints in Ireland. You say all the right things to me. And I'll show you around this beautiful little bar he has going here. We'll take a look at it, a little history in here. And I'll show you off a little interesting jacks. So here's the back side. And that goes up to the front. And then we'll go in to here and see the jacks. So they take in these old Guinness kegs and converted them into urinals. And then you have the white bar logo and then just your normal American loop. And like I said, that's basically the insides and outsides of the pipe. That's a very good little lace. And I'm going to stop and have a quick pint of gas. Oh, yeah. You know, and they're in bad heads. They're unfit, you know, and they're just, they'll never get out of it, you know. Okay, here's my pint of Guinness. He has a little shamrock on the top. Like I said, one of the best pints in Wexford at least. Here we go. Slancha. Now we just wait around till mangans open up and I'll show you what a rissle is. We're gonna have a breadcrumb and a battered rissle. Only available in Wexford. So here we are, we're at Mangan's uh, traditional fish and chips. We're gonna experience the uh, rizzles. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good. I would like to have um, um, two rizzles, yes. one uh, breadcrumb yes. and one uh, batter, please. We only have breadcrumb. You only have breadcrumb? I'll take the See, there you go. Oh, that's the old one. So where's the old one? No, there it is. There, there. Hi. Burger of the year. That there we got that one. Burger of the year. Take away the year. Take away. Take away the year. There you go. There. Fine place. It was established in what? 68. This is all post-COVID. They have these little cubicles. got renovated a couple of times in the last few years. Yeah, so. Alrighty. So here's the uh, battered and the bread A few chips to add it into it. So we'll take a sh Andrew, what they're like. Mm. Chips are very good. Just to give you a background on what a rissole is, it originated in France. And basically, what it is is they take the old chips and they mulch it all together. They add some old oil and some spices and herbs. And that's basically what it is. So here's the breadcrumb, or the battered, sorry. It's basically like a mashed potato type. Chips are very good too. Very spicy, uh, very greasy, but... Mm. Lovely. Now you can have some red sauce with it, or which is like ketchup. Um, but I, I, I select it with the uh, salt and vinegar, add it onto it. Mm. I think the breadcrumb is my favorite. If I had to choose. Between the two, the bread come is, is probably my favorite. It's 
a little bit of extra something, you know? Mm. Lovely. Chips are great too. Mm. Definitely recommend if you come to White Church. Shop a chipper and order a Rizzo. Like they're really, really good. In the next few minutes, finish this, and then we'll conclude the video. Thanks. So that was that. Very tasty. Now uh, I'm gonna head back home and uh, walk. It's about 45 minutes, and then I'll work on uploading it. And then uh, please um, watch the video, subscribe. If you're not and like and comment and then please give me comments on where you would like me to uh, walk an area again I have a few places in mind but I would always always would love to have any recommendations thank you very much